Hi, welcome to Box on the Box Rock and Celluloid, Bot Brack for short. I'm over Box, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Ozzy Osbourne's latest album, Patient Number no. 9. So I'm a bit late uh, to press for this, so to speak, because it came out last Friday, but uh, unfortunately I had to have time to listen to it. I haven't listened to it quite as much as I'd like, and um, you probably hear I'm not actually feeling that well. I think last time I did an album review, it wasn't well. Uh, I basically haven't been well for about six weeks, but anyway. Uh, so Ozzy's last album was Ordinary Man, which I thought was alright, um, but he's got good reviews. Uh, so my sort of viewpoint on kind of uh, Ozzy's uh, albums, obviously I think the first time was Blizzard of Oz and Dar of a Man, the classics, Dar of a Man, Man in particular being my favourite, um, particularly the title track, uh, I think it's a masterpiece uh, in metal history uh, with an amazing composition by Randy Rhodes. So those those arms really benefit from the great um, Curse Lake Daisy Rim section, obviously Randy Rhodes, Max Norman's production, and Ozzy being fresh and invigorated from Sabbath. Obviously then Randy Rhodes dies, and then they do the Bark at the Moon album, Jakey Lee comes in. And this is when I first really got into Ozzy. Love Jakey Lee. I don't love the album. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure I ever really did in a way, actually. I think, if I was honest with myself, um, I love Rock and Roll Rebel and Bark at the Moon. Uh, there's a track called Now You See It, which I really like. Uh, and then other than that, I can take or leave the rest of the album, really. Um, they never really quite captured Jakey e. Lee on record. Same applies really with the Ultimate Sin. I actually think this is a little more consistent, the songs. Um, terrible production. This is Ozzy in his Liberace phase. Um, but some better songs on that. Uh, um, but not great record. Then Jake goes and he does the first Zach Wild album, No Rest for the Wicked. And this is actually my favourite of the later Aussie albums in that period. Um, I have to prefer it to No More Tears, I think. Um, Zach puts in a really strong performance, a lot of production. Uh, it's definitely got four really cool songs on it, four or five, and it attracts good fillers. Um, I liked it at the time, and I, I still like it. No, it's just still a 7 out of 10. Uh, I've never totally bought into No More Tears. A lot of people rave about it. The title track's fantastic, but that's about it for me. Um, although it's very well produced, and there's tracks like Desire and Hellraiser, My Mom Coming Home, very popular album for Ozzy. Then after that, he tended to kind of stick with Zach. Uh, he did Osmosis, which had Perry Mason, which was all right, and then it was Down to Earth, I think. They did a covers album, uh, 2005, um, was it Undercover? Uh, then, 2000, then Black Rain in 2007, which was all right, you know, trending more. Then Zach left and then he did an album with uh, Gus G called Scream uh, on guitar. But he had a different producer and Gus, it seemed to me like Gus G just did the solos on that. Um, and Scream was all right. I think one of the, the disappointing things I think with that album was I felt Gus G was someone who could maybe bring a bit of a Randy vibe in. Uh, so uh, one of the um, uh, trademarks of Ozzy's early work is the 16th note, pedal tone, digga 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 digga, you think of a riff like I don't know, da digga 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 da digga, or bark on the move, da da digga digga da digga digga da, slightly different rhythm there, but you get the idea. But they never really came back, they just seemed to be slightly generic riffs. Then, um, uh, that was it, and then he, he did a big gap. Obviously, he did the Sabbath thing with 13, which I wasn't really that keen on. I didn't really buy into that. I wasn't really into the songs were too long. I wasn't into Rick Rubin's production. Um, uh, and then he did Ordinary Man, um, and the, the pattern with that, he got in a producer called Andrew Watt, and they brought in a lot of guest performers. Uh, kind of like the Slash thing. I see Slash plays on it. And this album follows the same formula. I think what's the first thing that's interesting about this album, he's got some in, interesting, more interesting guests on this. Jeff Beck and Eric Clapton play on this album. Uh, first track I listened to when it was Rooster's Patient number nine, I was very was pleasantly surprised. I've got to admit again, I've been very really cynical with the Aussie thing recently. Obviously he's been ill. They've announced two dates in 2018 to go in 2019. These got moved to 2020. Then the pandemic happened. They got moved to 2021. They got moved again. And that had been moved to 2023. Uh, and obviously, I, I bought tickets because I was going to see Judas Priest supporting. Uh, and the upshot of this is Judas Priest had never toured the Firepower album in the UK. And part of that is because of the pandemic. But obviously, it's because they've chosen to hook up with Aussie and Aussie's cancelled. Whether these gigs will go ahead, I don't know. I know a lot of people sent the tickets back. I did. Uh, Ticketmaster still got the booking fee, so a lot of people are pissed off. So there's a kind of a bit of feeling that will uh, can, can Ozzy do a whole set? Obviously, he appeared recently at the end of the Commonwealth Games, 
and it was good fun. He sounded good form, but there was there was kind of rumours was it he using backing tracks? So anyway, I was pretty surprised when I heard this track. I uh, thought it was his vocal sound it sounded good. Uh, and yeah, a lot of co-writers of this: Andrew Watt, Robert Trujillo, Chad Smith, a guy called Ali Tamposi. Unless it's a lady, I'm not sure. But I like the track. Um, it's got an interesting sort of riff. Uh, really cool Jeff Beck solo, bringing in a different vibe. Uh, and I like the production. I think that's one of the things about this album is basically I think they started work on it immediately after Ordinary Man. I think it's been in lockdown. I think Ozzy's got his own home studio. Andrew Watt will. The people working on it will. It means they can spend a lot of time at getting performances. They're not happy with something. Everything's recalled in the digital universe. They can just go back and redo it. Ozzy can go down to his studio if he's feeling up to it probably you probably get an hour, two hours a day, three at best, um, you know, at a guy's age and he's hard to sing. Uh, so that's what it sounds like to me. There's a lot of carefulness to this. I do think it's a good sounding record. It makes good use of different sounds, orchestration. I think um, uh, the rhythm guitar sound touches bass with sort of an early kind of Sabbath sound and the more bigger Zach sound. And that features on this track. Really strong opening track, 7 minutes 21. Next track is a more all uh, with Mike McCready. This is catchy. It's a little more throwaway. It was a good filler, and I would say the same with Parasite. Um, Taylor Hawkins plays on this. The uh, late Taylor, Haw Taylor Hawkins. So a little dip with those tracks, but solid filler. Then you've got um, a couple of really good tracks. There's No Escape from Now, uh, which is more epic. Tony Omi plays on this. Omi sounding great. Uh, again, more that Sabbath by bringing in, uh, bringing in a bit more psychedelia. And the same for one of those days. This has got Duff McKagan co-writing on it as well. Um, this features Eric Clapton. This is really interesting. Clapton uses a wah-wah. He's, he's kind of using cream-style licks. Um, you know, I suppose you'd say kind of like it's Tales of Brave Unices or something like that. And it's got that kind of psychedelic vibe. I like this track. Uh, it's really interesting sort of getting Clapton to do that. And he kind of solos all the way through. Uh, he's got lead guitar all the way through. Um, really good. And then you've got A Thousand Shades and Def Jeff Beck comes back on this. Again, this is good. Interesting, Ryan Tedder's one of the co-writers on this. So Ryan Tedder, uh, forget the name his band is in, um, but he's covering for Adele and things like that. He's kind of kind of more pop rock. Um, uh, so again, that's quite an interesting collaboration, but it works. This is a really good track. And then you've got Mr. Darkness. This is another good track. Although I don't like the stupid fun of you don't know my name, you son of a bitch at the end. Zach Wilde feature on this, and one of the things refreshing with Zach's performance on this, I feel like when you've got a whole arm with Zach, you can feel a bit samey with the pentatonics and the wah. Um, but because he's just playing on three tracks on his album, his solos really make the mark. He's got his wow going, and he's really so full, and he can tell he's got loads of dig. There's a lot of guts to his playing here, um, and I enjoyed that. They got Nothing Feels Right. Again, this has got a really good Phil Chorus. Nothing Feels Right. Um, again, quite epic. Another great Zach solo. I'm just checking on my notes here. Yeah, actually, yeah. At the end of this Zach kind of solos at the end, there's a lot of Zach attack, which is really good. Um, there you got Evil Shuffle. This kind of build brings in that 12A swinging vibe, uh, which Sabbath were famous for. And... The previous track, that's in Mr. Darkness, um, kind of goes into a twilight vibe at the end. So, again, touching bass with the Sabbath. I like this track. And then Degradation Rules. This features Tony Omi. So this is the second track released on the album. This is really good. Um, again, lovely Sabbath vibe. Iomi hauling. I don't know if Iomi's done a rhythm guitar, but it kind of sounds like it. Um, uh, so, enjoyed this. Uh, and then the next track, Dead and Gone, uh, kind of uh, brings back the shot in the dark vibes. This is quite interesting. This is the only track. Um, I would say, um, if I was picking comparisons, I would say that the tracks on this album have a Sabbath vibe and a No More Tears vibe. But this has got the shot in the dark, 80s vibe. And again, it works really well. It's got a pedal tone, boom, 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 boom. Nice, clean guitar. I really like this track. Um, then it finishes with Dead God Only Knows, which is sort of a, an epic -y ballad. Um, it's pretty good. And then there's a little kind of instrumental with some vocals at the end. You know, I'm saying this instrumental. It's got vocals. It's got Dark Side Blues, uh, which seems a kind of improv thing. It's got harmonica on, and actually the, the, the album's got, it's got harmonica on another track. I'm trying to remember. 
Um, uh, I don't know if it's patient number nine. It might be no escape from now. Not sure. Don't quote me on that. But again, the harmonica is quite an interesting thing. It's coming from the wizard. Obviously, Sabbath, and there was a track of 13 where the harmonica came back, which Ozzy plays. Whether he plays harmonica, I'm not sure. There's quite a lot of collaborators on this. Dave Navarro plays on track 12, God Only Knows. You've got Robert Strilo on bass, Duff McKagan, Ch Chad Smith Telog is on drums. Um, obviously, Wy Zach, Jeff, Tony Omi, Mike McCready, Eric Clapton, guitar, Jeff Hom plays some guitar. Um, there's a lot of uh, engineers and so on. So this is a big collaborative effort, but I think it's paid off. I like this album. Uh, I'd like to listen to it more before doing this review, but I think going through it, I think patient number nine is really good. And then I think you, you've got a really strong run through track four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, uh, really strong. And then a couple of okay fillers at the end. So really good. Uh, I think I would be sort of between a seven and an eight out of 10 on this. Um, uh, I hate making these pronouncements, but I do think it's his best album in a, a good while, um, like I am not a massive No More Tears fan, but I think I would be safe in saying that, for me, most people would think, if you listen to I think you'd think, actually, yeah, this is the, the, the this is the best thing since No More Tears. It's certainly the most I've enjoyed uh, since the um, Norris for a Wicked. But I think it benefits, uh, you know, from really good production, good performances. What about Ozzy singing? I haven't come to that. Okay, it's clear there is some tracks of pitch correction, and you can hear... Heavy processing on Dozzy's voice, you know, he often double tracks and it's, it's probably got some kind of plugins where he's auto tracking and it kind of thickens up his voice. But there's quite a lot where, you know, it's clear his range is, is there. You know, I, I don't think Ozzy, you know, it's going to be hard for him to bell at a gig, but line by line, getting a good, a composite take. Um, he always did that in Sabbath. You know, it's quite commonly uh, known, in, particularly on South Bloody South, on the really high bits, they would punch in an Aussie. He would go, do it, you know, until he got it. Um, and he's always done it line by line. Aussie's a vocalist, he's not a singer. The way he's unique in metal is he's got this kind of psychedelic almost, it's almost like if the Beatles, John Lennon, did metal, I think. Um, he, you know, he's not like David Coverdale or Paul Rogers or Plant or Gillen. Ronnie Dio, Halford, these guys are singers. They have ray, a big range, emotional kind of style phrasing. Ozzy does have emotion. He does have quite a big range, or did do. Um, certainly around the time Savage of Savage, but he's, Savage, but he's, he's kind of more vocalising. He never had a kind of much of a blues-based aspect to his voice, and that was both the benefit uh, and hindrance. It made him stand out from those uh, other singers, but it meant that he was never quite kind of put in that echelon but he, his vocals are working fine on this you know obviously a lot of these songs will be in drop d or in standard d tuning to tune down uh so he's not hitting as much high notes but it, it it's like I said, it's all balanced out really well a lot of thoughts gone into this to get the right people and get the right performance at aussie and i think it's worked um so yeah between the seven and eight out of ten uh aussie osborne patient number nine present pleasantly surprised worth checking out uh, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks a lot.